It's a building material that insulates, fireproofs, and is practically indestructible. It's also deadly. Noted for its strength, asbestos has been popular in building materials like insulation and joint compounds. It was also used in brake pads, clutches, and in and around boilers and pumps. Hundreds of different products were made with asbestos, but it's toxic for those who work with or around these products. Even though it's a natural mineral, exposure to asbestos can lead to a rare and deadly cancer called mesothelioma. As an aeronautical engineer for the Air Force in the 1950s and 1960s, Paul Sizz was exposed to asbestos. There were areas that I worked in that involved uh, products that had asbestos in them. But again, in the 50s and 60s, it was not even a concern of mine. I really didn't pay, I really didn't pay much attention to the fact that they were asbestos-containing materials. That was a question we didn't ask. We thought it was a safe material. It wasn't until decades later that Paul was diagnosed with mesothelioma. Experts call this delay in symptoms the latency period. And for mesothelioma, it's usually between 15 and 40 years. Mesothelioma is a malignant tumor of the outside lining of the lungs and the inside lining of the chest walls. It also can occur in the abdomen, uh, around the bowel, or in the uh, peritoneum, which is the inside lining of the abdominal wall. The principal cause is asbestos, the inhalation of asbestos fibers or the swallowing uh, of asbestos fibers. These fibers then get transported out to the surface of the lung or out to the surface of the bowel, and over time, over many years usually, they can occasionally, uh, rarely, uh, result in this malignant tumor, mesothelioma. In the early 1900s, manufacturers of asbestos products began expressing concerns about asbestos exposure. Despite these concerns, workers and the public in general were never properly warned of the true risks of asbestos exposure. Many people are just now being diagnosed with asbestos disease. We're still seeing a pretty steady stream of people with uh, mesothelioma, unfortunately. We, we had hoped it was going to go away, but we're still seeing more of it than we'd like. Uh, and most of the time, their exposures occurred many years ago, 30, 40 years ago. Often, people who are diagnosed with mesothelioma never even knew they had come in contact with asbestos. For instance, the spouses of people who have never been exposed can develop the disease after washing asbestos-covered clothes. We see mesothelioma about 15% of the time in people who have what we call bystander exposure. These are typically wives who uh, had husbands who worked in uh, industries where they had asbestos exposure. The wives would shake out the work clothes and launder them and unfortunately a few of them have gotten mesothelioma. Sometimes parents who've worked with asbestos products carry that asbestos home to their children and those children develop mesothelioma. It's only years later that the exposure reveals itself. My wife started showing symptoms of indigestion, weakness, abdominal pain. After my wife was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we did an exhaustive survey of the places she could have been exposed. The sources ranged from things like uh, building materials on the house, brake linings on cars and trucks, uh, possibly even things that were in the soil, vermiculite, that sort of thing. But in my opinion, the overwhelming exposure was due to the clothes that I wore home from work. In those days I was working in uh, power plants and a lot of asbestos was used for insulation and it was not all that regarded as uh, dangerous and uh, in my jobs I came home with enough asbestos on my clothes that uh, if you shake my clothes they'd make a cloud and she did my laundry and I'm relatively sure that was her strongest exposure. The course of feeling ill to getting the right diagnosis until she died was about nine months. I was very fatigued. I felt like my arms and legs weighed a thousand pounds. And it was just, it was just an effort to walk. But I kept on going to work because I thought, well, I'm just getting old. But that wasn't it at all. I was diagnosed with mesothelioma 
in, I believe it was June or July of 2007. Someone asked me, what did your father do? And my father was a master mechanic for Chrysler. And he always, always was around cars and the brakes and everything. And I was right there with my daddy. I was helping my mother with the laundry and and I guess I just was one of them that was susceptible to to the mesothelioma. Yeah, it was a shock because I thought, I have eight siblings and they're all okay, but I'm only the second oldest. So that may come up later on down the line. I don't know. Most people were exposed to asbestos and never knew they were actually being exposed. They weren't told there was asbestos in the product. They were never informed there might be a danger associated with the product. So most people have an exposure for which when they're first asked the question, they won't be able to identify the exposure, but in reality, they've had a lot of exposure. The prognosis for mesothelioma patients depends largely on how early and aggressively it's treated. Treatments are costly and include surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. For Paul Sizz and thousands of others, the battle against mesothelioma continues. I feel very well. Um, I think as far as long as I can keep up my activities and my health, I think I'll feel pretty good. And I think financially we're going to be okay. So there's really no reason for me to feel down and out. Um, I feel very positive uh, that um, I can't beat it, but I'm going to give it a hard time before it beats me. The O'Brien Law Firm fights for the victims of asbestos-related diseases. For two decades, the attorneys at the O'Brien Law Firm have successfully represented victims in Missouri, Illinois, and the Midwest. The mission of the O'Brien Law Firm is simple, to deliver quality legal representation to mesothelioma victims, victims of asbestos disease. And we really achieve that by just relying on two core values, total commitment to each and every client and making sure our clients get the respect and the dignity they deserve. The award-winning team at the O'Brien Law Firm knows how devastating a mesothelioma diagnosis can be for victims and their families. Between lost paychecks and mounting medical expenses, mesothelioma patients need help and the companies responsible for asbestos exposure need to be held accountable. Companies have shirked their responsibilities in two ways. The first way is when they made and sold products that had asbestos in them, they were dangerous products and they did nothing to take the danger out or warn people using those products that there was a danger in using those products. The second thing, when those people are fighting for just and just proper compensation today, the companies see how can we use the bankruptcy code to not pay full compensation. Many companies have used the chapter of the bankruptcy code, chapter 11, to put money aside to pay asbestos cases, but in reality only pay a small percentage of the true compensation they should be paying. My father was exposed to asbestos uh, through his employer. He was basically uh, a laborer, just a regular factory worker. He had told family members he was going in for some tests and they had to perform surgery on him. And when we got to the hospital, the doctors was going over the surgery with the immediate family and they told us that uh, the lower part of his body was just uh, completely filled with cancer. When uh, my father passed away, there were quite a, uh, quite a few uh, expenditures that were out there. Doctor bills, medical bills, nursing home, the O'Brien Law Firm have just been absolutely wonderful to, to myself, uh, my mother, and uh, my family uh, in, in terms of uh, support, uh, emotionally, financially. I mean, they've just been spectacular. I mean, they've been wonderful. I recommend the O'Brien Law Firm for, for two reasons. One is the staff that they have, the people, are very attuned to the, to the mesothelioma patients and what they're going through and how they can help them. The second thing is I'm amazed at their skill in putting together suits that will have the mesothelioma patients have some financial recovery. It, it amazes me as to what they've been able to do. It was more than I would ever have expected. The loss of my wife has been tremendous to our family. 
She was the matriarch. The bills were overwhelming, and if it weren't for getting a, a decision in the courts, yeah, they would have been even more overwhelming. I was introduced to the O'Brien law firm through uh, my work, through my union, and uh, they were handling several cases similar to mine, and they made me aware that there were other people that had the same sort of case and that we could pursue this in the courts and possibly get a decision. Well, I think one of the main reasons I would uh, recommend the O'Brien Law Firm is because their experience in this field and the treatment I've gotten in my case. They made me feel human. It wasn't just a case. I would recommend the O'Brien Law Firm because they do give you hope. They stay right on top of it. They, they don't leave anything to chance. They sit right down with you. They discuss what is happening, what perhaps they can do for you, what they can do for your family, and I appreciated that. The future of the O'Brien Law Firm is dictated by what happens to people as regards the diagnosis of mesothelioma. We believe, and the, the science is, that people will continue to get diagnosed with mesothelioma for 10, 20 years to come. So we're going to be here to represent those people as they get diagnosed one by one. The second part of our future is we, we have a role to play in the public forum. Legislators are always trying to pass legislation that will take their rights away. We fight the legislation. We've done it in Washington, D.C. for the last 10 years. And lastly, we want to participate in the public debate that's going on about mesothelioma. Has it gone away? It hasn't. It needs people to bring that voice to the table. Ongoing medical research needs to go on so people can get treatment for that disease in the future. It's not over. It's still a problem.